Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to lower a thermostat. This is for an N62 engine, BMW, and this particular engine they designed it probably for emissions that the thermostat opens at 107 degrees. So that is considerably hotter than the normal running conditions of 85, 90, 95 degrees centigrade. So what people have done is they've tried to lower the thermostat opening temperature so that the lifespan of the engine and the cooling system lasts longer. So in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how I'm going to do that. Now over here, I have a generic thermostat. I got this one off Amazon. It was about $30. And this one over here is the OEM version. For example, there is the BMW part number. All I'm going to be doing here is lowering the temperature and I'll quickly show you some of the different methods one could use. Now over here I have an older one, this one had failed and I just opened it up and cut it open just to see what was inside. Now there are a few ways of lowering the temperature of which I've only tried one which was successful. Some people have spoken about putting little shims on here and increasing the shaft length because this would travel on there. And if the length is a bit longer, then it would reduce the volume, therefore it would open sooner. Because what is inside here is a special type of wax. It is not wax from a candle. It is a very special type of wax. And as it heats up, it expands. And this moves along the shaft, therefore opening that disc, allowing the water or the coolant to travel and therefore circulate, cooling the engine down. So as you can see, it is spring loaded. So my only concern is adding shims here. I'm just worried about things getting jammed. Another option of lowering the temperature is to reduce the size of this piece over here. If one has a look at it, you can see that there's quite a lot of open space there. Obviously there was some wax inside. And when I zoom in, you may even notice that there's been some crimping or pinching of this. I'm not sure if that is part of the calibration. So if one could reduce the size of the internal volume, then that will also lower the opening temperature because the volume will be reduced, which means there'll be more pressure at a lower temperature. So that is quite hard to do because it does mean removing this washer over here and then getting access to this cavity and then putting this back and maybe riveting it or welding it on top here. So I haven't actually tried that. Another option that people have spoken about is reducing the tension or reducing the pitch maybe or the number of turns on the spring because the spring is holding this down. So if there's less force holding this plate down, therefore this could open earlier. Now to do that, one also needs to open this cap and that requires some additional metal work. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this one up I'm going to get some of the wax and then I'm going to transfer some of that wax into here and therefore that will lower the temperature because there'll be more wax. Now the way that I'm going to lower the temperature of this one is I'm going to take this generic, I'm going to disassemble it, I'm going to then heat it up with my heat gun, I'm going to let some of the wax trip out, I'm then going to transfer some of that wax into this unit, thus increasing the amount of wax therefore lowering the opening temperature. At the moment this only opens at 105-107 degrees. I've checked it on my vehicle and what I'll quickly do is I'll quickly just close this here and then I will show it to you in the pot boiling and how it does not open. It only actually opens when I increase the voltage or give it some current here. What this is, is this is a MAP thermostat. What it means is by applying a current here, I can increase the heat here by using current. I can also lower the opening temperature by the electronic MAP function. We use this to accelerate the opening of the thermostat if the engine is under a lot of pressure. For example, going up a hill, the ECU of your car will then provide current here to provide extra heat in order to open this earlier because the engine is probably running very hot because your car may be going up a hill or pulling a trailer or whatever, therefore it will open earlier. So I'm going to quickly put this in boiling water, show you that it does not open even in boiling water. I'll then add a current source here and you'll see that it'll only open at a certain current and then what I'll do is I'll show it to you after I've reduced its temperature. Right over here I have a bench supply it's currently at 12 volts I haven't got it connected you can see I've unplugged it. Right over here I have my thermostat and I'm even pouring in boiling hot water and uh, you should notice that it doesn't open 
So this thermostat only opens above 100 degrees. Now, having a look at the metal plate, you can see that it still hasn't opened, even though it's been cooking here for a bit of time. There's the plate. Right, so it's been here for a couple of minutes. It hasn't operated. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the electronic control. So I'm going to provide a current and I'm going to provide 0.5 amps. Right, so I've now connected the MAC control and I'm providing the thermostat with 0.5 amps and I'd like to see how much it opens. Right, I've just measured with my vernier and it has opened just under 3.2 millimeters. Even though it's been cooking here for about five minutes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more wax, have the same setup and I'll show you that it will have opened even more than that. Right, so I need to open both of these. So I just do one side and then one side, one side and then one side. Right now on the OEM one, it is very stiff. It doesn't just slide off. On the generic, it's also quite stiff. So what I'm going to do now is just heat it up with a heat gun. It's very important to distribute the heat. And I just want to heat it up a little bit just to get it moving. Now be very careful because you don't want any of that wax to fall out. So I just turn it on its back. I just need to open the OEM one. Give it a chance to heat up. What I mean by that is heat it for a bit and then hold it away. Right, so this is the generic one. I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to get some of the wax out. I'm going to pour it on this plate and then I'm going to put some into the OEM one. Right, there's some of the wax coming out now. Right, so I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in 0.1 of a gram inside here now. So I just put it on the top there and then I light it and then it uh, slides in nicely. After much trial and error, the final amount that I put in the thermostat. Now I just need to put this back on. So I'm just going to heat it up a little bit. Remember that I don't want to destroy this one, so I'm just, I'm just heating it up a bit. Alright, so here it is. It's in the boiling water and um, it's opened a tiny little bit. And I'm now going to turn on the bench supply. So it's going to have the same current. Now I'm going to leave it in there for two minutes. All right, so the thermostat is now open seven millimeters. Now, if you have an infrared thermometer, notice that at about 90 degrees, the plate of the thermostat must be open. So in this case, it's about one and a half millimeters open. And that is how I know it will be correct in the vehicle. Otherwise, if you haven't got the infrared thermometer, then you can use the bench power supply to also do your measurements. So I did both. I did the bench power supply showing that it opened more and obviously the infrared thermometer measuring at 90 degrees just in the water, obviously without the bench power supply connected. Right, so here's the unit. I'm gonna go and install this on the vehicle. It is now closed. I've done some tests and I will show you the results. All right, so the running temperature is about 93, uh, they're about 92, sometimes 91, depending on whether the aircon is on or off. When the car revs higher, or specifically if you put it into sports mode, then the temperature drops. It's like the ECU is compensating there using that map function. But if the car is on idle at a traffic light or if you're in traffic, the temperature does go up. I do hit some 95s, uh, even had a 96 degrees, but this is far lower than the 107 degrees, sometimes 109 degrees I was getting. This is a bit of a trial and error process. For example, if you put too much wax in the cavity, then the thermostat opens too early. If you put too little, then it opens too late. 
Now, while I said I put in 0.5 grams, uh, this is not an exact science because if I did it with a different thermostat, maybe the cavity was slightly bigger. For example, I noticed on the generic thermostat, the pin was actually longer and the inside cavity was different. So it's almost like they got their own calibrations. And also there's something called hysteresis, which means that there may be some overshoot there's sometimes also a delay in how long it takes the thermostat to operate and that's also why I sometimes get slightly higher temperatures which is normal. Now what happens if you put too much wax in and it's opening at like 70 degrees? Well this is how you solve that problem. You just need to remove some of the wax and I'll show it now. Right so what I'm going to do is just remove a tiny bit. I'm just putting a screwdriver in, a screwdriver that does not damage the seal. There's a seal on the inside there. This screwdriver is smaller than that. And all I'm doing is I'm just turning it a little bit and I'm going to take just a little bit of that wax out. There we go. And that's it. That's all I'm taking out. Just a tiny bit as you can see. Right, so I've taken that out and I'll reinstall it and now test it. All right, just some closing remarks. I've now done this more than once. I've been driving the vehicle for weeks and it's become stable. Most important is to get the air out of your cooling system. On some cars, there's an auxiliary side where the, uh, there's some valves that allow the cooling system to actually heat up the air for your cabin. So that means that when you are getting the air out of your cooling system, make sure you put the air temperature high in the cabin to get the, cooling, uh, the coolant to circulate in order to get rid of that air. What happens when there is air in the system, you might get some sudden peaks. For example, you may have got your thermostat to be 90 degrees, but then you're getting a 98 or 100. You probably got some air still trapped in the system and uh, you find this ha happening. You might be wondering why I do this in the first place. Well, many or if not most engines are designed to operate at 90 degrees or thereabout. Now, these vehicles are operating at 105, 108, but it's really just for that idling time, probably to pass the emissions test because obviously the hotter the engine, the bigger, the more expansion there is, the less oil that is burned. But when you're traveling at highway speeds, you'll actually see that the car, the map function kicks in and lowers the thermostat temperature anyway. So one of the benefits of lowering it a bit is that the cooling system is under less pressure because that is one of the main failures on these cars is the cooling system, the expansion tanks uh, leak or you get leaks in other part of the engine. All right, so thanks for watching. Remember, do this at your own risk. Cheers.